No one would have to know. Normal People is my current comfort show, which is crazy to say, given how many people jokingly lump it into the horror genre, and for good reason. No, but it's a heartbreaking show, but I keep coming back to it. I've now seen it all the way through three times I've read the novel, it's the fastest I've ever read a book, and I often return to certain episodes randomly just because of the nostalgia I feel when watching it. I love the characters, have deep emotional connections to them, and definitely romanticize their growing up in Ireland and living in Europe, which I think is something a lot of people from the States can relate to. There's an energy of longing that comes with watching any film that takes place in Europe for us romantics, as its visual beauty provides a stark contrast from what we see on a daily basis in over-commercialized America. But today I wanted to break down not just why Normal People is my comfort show, or why I enjoy it so much, or why for some reason I think my life will be 10 times better if I move to Europe, which probably isn't even true, but maybe it, it could be. I just wanted to have a chat with you about what I think is different about what Normal People provides for the viewer, or maybe what it provided for me and how I feel that influenced and continues to influence culture and media, and how, because of the time it came at, Normal People sort of gave us a break from the delusional and romantic dramas we've been accustomed to. Today I'll be talking mostly about the show Normal People, not so much about the novel, but I do believe this is such a strong adaptation that the two are pretty interchangeable, if there's a difference at all. Spoilers are ahead, so if you haven't seen it, I recommend you go and watch it. It's an amazing story. It is a sad story, but you will fly through it, I promise. 12 episodes, 22 minutes apiece, Hulu. Normal People is one of the most realistic depictions of modern life I've seen on screen, period. Especially in terms of normal adolescent lives, Sally Rooney has her thumb right on the pulse of the young adult general public and it shows through in Normal People. Surprise, surprise, Normal People is about just that, normal, regular people in their last year of high school and their years of college, going through life with developing frontal lobes like the rest of us, making mistakes, hurting each other and other people, loving themselves and other people, going through the cliche of trying their best and falling flat on their face while doing it. We weave in and out of the main characters, Connell and Marianne's lives, as they weave themselves in and out of each other's lives, although they're never really out of each other's lives because of the love they share for one another. Just as most people during their late teens and early 20s, Marianne and Connell struggle, battle, and try to work through their wants and desires for their own life, while having to manage the influence of their own conditioning and in some cases unprocessed trauma, and essentially sit at the table with the hands they were dealt and start playing the game of life. And of course, we all know what high school and college can be like so being surrounded by other people who are looking to accomplish the same thing, but using their own means, their own influences, their own conditioning, their own trauma, uh, and inevitably clashing with people. We all know what that looks like in those years of school. And when we talk about realism, we can't not talk about Paul Meskel and Daisy Edgar Jones' performances. Of course, I believe this is a case of great writing meeting great performance, but they take this realism off the page and into the body in remarkable ways. I don't feel either of them is playing an archetype. They're being singular and specific in their portrayal of the characters, and by doing that, they accomplish what anyone who's writing or performing an archetype wants, the emotional attachment and connection from the audience through a relatable emotional experience. Paul's performance as Connell is one of the subtlest portrayals of mental illness I've seen, and one that allows me to see myself in his character. The involvement in good performance in sports, being surrounded by lots of quote-unquote friends but not necessarily feeling connected at times, experiencing loneliness and isolation, knowing it's partially self-inflicted, being seen by others as a confident great person and feeling the complete opposite at times, it's all suffocating, life is suffocating. And Sally did an amazing job of writing Connell as this, and Paul an amazing job at experiencing and allowing that. Daisy playing Marianne is the same deal, and although I can't relate as specifically to her female experience, she feels new and fresh too. Her directionlessness, but also confidence and objective, often stoic view of the world, I don't know that there's a word for it. She has many a reason to play the victim game, but she's not concerned with doing it. She's more explorative and confident, while Connell is more reserved and hesitant, and in their kinship they find a great balance and dynamic. Not just the two leads, but every character in this story had their humanity put on display in some way, which brings them, for me, from straight villain or good guy or friend or lover to just a human, a person. And we often see the likes of Rachel, Rob, Jamie, Helen, Peggy's humanity through their relationship with Marianne and or Connell, 
it's not hard to see that they're enduring their own battles and likely or obviously long for something like Connell and Marianne have. What I think strikes and resonates with so many people in Normal People, though, is its mundanity. The fact that we are watching something most of us have gone through in our own lives, something that's not spectacular in nature, the drudgery of those late high school, early college years, the pain and existential energy of your first heartbreak, time feeling like it's flying by as you sit in the passenger seat with no control over it. All of these themes, they're, they're almost second nature to a lot of us. Our generations have been fed delusional romantic media, in my opinion, whether it's the formulaic rom-com, which uh, Broey de Chanel, who has an amazing channel, just did a great video on called The Anatomy of a Rom-com, or other 2000 slash early 2010 romantic dramas, I think we're so used to being able to sort of separate ourselves from the delusion we see on screen. It's like, of course there's a happy ending, or of course there's a look in the camera right at the end, or of course the man is giving the take me back speech at the end of the final act, but normal people brought something different, and that was its realism, but also it's inexplicable unpredictability, which is perhaps the most realistic part of this story. Oftentimes in media, it seems like creators either feel they have to put the answer right in our face or, on the opposite end, make something so ambiguous to therefore give it some sort of higher artistic value. I believe there's a balance, and often it can just be found in the truth. When a creator employs unapologetic, unflinching honesty and authenticity into their work, it's not only refreshing, it's relaxing. As an audience member, this honesty helps me immerse so much more in the story because life is just something that occurs sometimes without reason. Things don't necessarily always make sense in the moment for the majority of life or at all. And as painful as every single one of Marianne's and Connell's breakups or miscommunications or assumptions or self-inflicted wounds were, they were honest. It's how it goes sometimes. Everyone has their own world up in their head and they're trying their best to make sense of it. So much of this show is the interpretation of the other character through one character's eyes versus their own interpretation of self. They both think so highly of one another but struggle with how they feel about themselves, which leads to an occasional spiraling of thinking that more times than one ended their romantic relationship even when both of them really still wanted it to go on. It's those forces that feel like they're coming from somewhere else that we feel we can't ignore rather than us just living objectively and moment to moment. We often strive for perfectionism, which I think is something Connell suffered from more than Marianne, and he allowed the thoughts of what he should be doing creep in and override his better judgment. We could talk all day about how their miscommunications kept them apart, but I feel what is even more worthy of our breath is how their love kept them together, mainly their acceptance of one another. Aside from the occasional argument about how Connell didn't touch Marianne in public enough, which is fair, I believe what kept these two characters together for so long fully permeated their bond together and led to a growing, undying love for one another was a radical acceptance of each other. They both had so much love and admiration for who the other person was, and they didn't feel it necessary to try to change the other person in any way. Sometimes in relationships, I feel as though we can sometimes lack that feeling of being accepted because a partner wants us to act a certain way, and oftentimes it's not due to malicious intent on the other person's end, but maybe just their own perfectionism or overthinking or the way that they look at the world. But Marianne and Connell, as directionless as they sometimes may have felt in their own minds, always had an internal resiliency that kept them working towards something, whether that was school, writing, art, etc. They had a love beyond themselves, an idea a dear friend of mine shared with me recently, something that kept them going, consistently filled their cup so that they could allow each other to live their own lives, not try to create something that involved a compromise of what either of them wanted. They collaborated. And that's why, although I cry every time I watch it, I think of the ending of Normal People as a happy one, perhaps an even happier ending than the traditional happy ending in media where both people compromise their values for an in-the-moment love, which is celebrated in the moment. I think what that actually fosters is delusion into the audience's mind about what their own romantic lives should look like. To me, I'm more attracted to the idea of having someone who fully loves me, all of me, every ounce of me, so much that their intention isn't to change me in any way, but rather to accept me fully, even and especially the flaws and support me through them. And sometimes that means not being together physically or romantically, and that hurts, it sucks, but it's also beautiful because of the sacrifice, which I think is more honorable than sacrificing part of yourself to make a relationship work, in my opinion. I also think in Connell and Marianne's acceptance of each other, and through watching their lives unfold over four to five years, we can find permission to fully accept ourselves. They're obviously flawed, to the point where at some stages we think of them as bad people, 
and we watch them endure the pain of that, of their own decisions, but we see them make it out the other end because that's what life is, enduring joy and pain and struggle and everything messy. But we're able to see how well these two turned out and relate them to ourselves, compare their struggles to ours and see how great their lives look like from the outside. But that does take time as normal people's events didn't just happen overnight like we sometimes can expect. I'm obsessed with normal people's use of time, how they portrayed its movement, how they fit five years of life into 12 episodes. And again, I feel like they did it with truth at the center. Time was made to move so slow while Connell and Maryam were together, yet it flew by when they were apart. There was a lot of on-screen coitus in this show, but what it communicated to me was how important these moments were and how much time slowed down for the two of them. It reminded me what love is capable of, halting time and stopping you in your tracks. And of course, on the other end of this sword is the time they spent away from one another, which flew by in the show and in the story. That doesn't make it meaningless time, it just shows it for what it is, moments of catching your breath versus the moments we just talked about, which is more like a moment of losing it. Time can shapeshift depending on which one of these seasons of life you're in. I'm always very interested in the timing of a show and culture too, and normal people certainly benefited by coming out right as lockdown started, and I think it also benefited a lot of people and really shaped the time period for them right at the beginning of the pandemic. If there's anything our generation has completely wrong, I think it is attraction. What is attraction? What is attractive? What attractiveness is? We all hold ideals in our heads of what we should look like, act like, talk like, walk like, think like, and they've come from all over the place, but what is most attractive, I think, is when someone steps into the way they are unapologetically and lives their truth. And that truth, of course, is influenced by all these forces that I just mentioned before too, but I think there's a difference. Often it's all the things we resent about ourselves that we feel guilty or shameful about that make us interesting and attractive, yet we make the decision for other people by being timid about the things that make us different around them, creating this air of negativity around something that is actually so specific and unique. For example, the difference between Connell and all of the other boys in his friend group was his shame about how they joked around, how they made fun of people, how they subscribed to the social hierarchy in high school. And while there were definitely times that he and I in my own life wished he could just be exactly like everyone else, or rather the version of everyone else that he held in his brain, what made him stand out as attractive to Marianne was exactly that, his kindness, his responsibility, the thing that made him different. And the same goes with Marianne, her kindness and calm nature in the face of abuse and constant bullying was her differentiator, although sometimes she probably felt emotionless and just uh, numb to it. We're so afraid to show all of ourselves to the world, but normal people shows us that although you won't be for everyone, that's not your problem. In fact, it's not a problem at all, and it shouldn't even be your aim. What makes you attractive is all the things you may have been told to hide throughout your life or the things that feel scary to show people because they're not normal. But that's the paradox. All of you is what attracts others. And I see normal people as a story about your people being out there waiting for you to shine your light unabashedly in all of its specificity. I'm so happy to have been able to talk about this gentle, beautiful piece of art. I love it so much. I can't wait to watch it again. I'd love to hear about your experience with normal people below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. You know I love you. And I'm never going to feel the same way for anyone else. <laughs>